Thank you for joining me today. I'm in the book of James at the toward the end of the New Testament. James was, of course, the half-brother of the Lord Jesus. Uh, his mother was Mary. Of course, he had uh, Joseph as his father, whereas Jesus uh, was conceived by the Holy Spirit. But, J but James, for a long time, was antagonistic to his older brother, Jesus, and he rejected those uh, the, the things that Jesus was doing. And he, um, he, he didn't understand his older brother. It was only after the resurrection of Jesus that he met James personally. And James came to understand who he was. And so James became the leader of the church in Jerusalem and the author of this particular letter that we are reading here. So in, in chapter one of James, and it's just like many of us, we, uh, we read these things again and again, but the Holy Spirit is able to take the word and he is able to uh, impress upon us something new that we hadn't understood before. And that's what happened to me when I recently read this particular passage. In verse 16 of this particular passage, it says, do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Now, we, we recognize the, that particular phrase, and it goes on to say, every good and perfect gift is from above. <coughs> Excuse me. And, and as a result of, of that, we sometimes are fooled by, by the context of that. Why in that place did James write, don't be deceived? Well, part of it is that, is that we have a tendency to take things that are from the enemy of our souls and assume that they are good and proper and that they are, um, that they are the things that we need to, uh, to trust in. But he says that every good and perfect gift comes from above. And so we have to watch and make sure that, the, uh, that we're attributing to, to God and to the enemy the things that are happening in our world properly so that those good and perfect gifts that come from him, we acknowledge that. But those things that are meant to, um, to deceive us and to turn us away, we recognize where they come from. So, so he talks then in the midst of all of that about being tempted and we need to be careful not to, be, uh, to attribute to Satan what is a good and perfect gift that comes from God. So it requires discernment, don't be deceived. But what was interesting to me is that later on, as we continue on here, he talks more about de being deceived. In verse 22, he says, be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. And so, so very often what can happen is that we think that by uh, by listening and by giving some sort of mental assent, mental credence to what we have heard, that we are doing what is the will of God. But, but James points out that sometimes we can do that and fail to actually do the word. In other words, we can, we can mentally assent to some of these doctrines, but fail to apply them to our lives. And, and that's where we are deceiving ourselves. We give lip service to the acknowledgement that these are important, but then we turn around and we don't, uh, we don't apply them. And we're not really being wise and discerning at that particular point. We are deceiving ourselves. And then at the very, uh, in the very last paragraph of this particular chapter, he talks about the one that doesn't uh, bridle his tongue uh, even though he thinks he is religious. And in this particular case, he deceives his heart. And it was just recently when I read that that I began to see all of those deceits that James is talking about here. When we, when we live a life that is, um, that is religious on the outside, but it's not religious on the inside, that's when we're deceiving our hearts. He goes on and he'll talk about the, the power of the tongue and that no one can tame the tongue. You can't tame your tongue and I can't tame my tongue. However, if our faith in God 
and our faith in the Lord Jesus is an internalized thing, then he will give control to our hearts, uh, to our tongues, excuse me, and we'll not be deceiving ourselves. Excuse me. So in this particular passage, three times, James tells us, don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived by Satan and what he appears to be doing. And don't be, don't be deceived by your heart and, uh, and bridling your tongue. And don't deceive yourself into thinking that just because you acknowledge something, that that's doing the thing that, that uh, God has called you to do. Be doers of the word, not hearers only. Father, we ask you to grant to us the grace to have eyes to see. Many of us, I, I confess myself, that we have deceived ourselves into believing that we are strong enough to resist the enemy or we are strong enough to uh, make sure we control our words, but we can't. And the reality is that we have deceived ourselves in those cases. So I pray, Father, for each one in this audience that they would truly sense that, uh, that you are the one who is controlling their tongues and their hearts and, and their minds as they look at all the ways in which you are working in them. So meet us in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day now.